Okay, ladies and gentlemen and everything in between, welcome back. This is Let's Play King's Quest V, Episode 2, I guess. Um, and before I really get started here, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, I, I briefly talked about versions or LPs that have been done of this before. Um, Podugan or Podugan, or however you pronounce his, his name. Um, he did an LP of this uh, that used the, the voice acting version. And Shady Paradox did a speedrun of this. I'm not going to be doing either one of those. This will be more, I guess, like a walkthrough, because I've played this plenty of times before in the past. Um, you know, I, I just I played this game to death in the past, to be honest. Um, but this will be more like just an exploration. You know, I'll show you things that I like about it, just kind of walk you through my memories, you know? And, um, you know, this is the text-based version, because that's what I grew up with. So this will be my memory, and uh, who knows, maybe my, my big shot at voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. But anyway, um, you know, just let's sort of go through it. Like I said, um, I think I'll probably add an extra episode later of just the really funny parts of the voice acted version that are just really bad because I think they like hired their family or, or neighbors or whatever to do the voice acting. But without further ado, let's let's proceed and uh, we'll just we'll go about this my way. A poisonous snake! <laughs> For any of you who have no clue what that was all about, well, you'll see. The voice acted version is really bad. But as you can see, yes, there is a poisonous snake over here. If I look at it, a large venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. Oh yeah, that's another thing. The narrator in the, the spoken version, he is I mean, he's got this, he got this deep voice. It's like he's choking on a cigar or whatever. But he sounds really bored. Not, like, epic, just blah. Anyway, as you remember, maybe, Cedric said, let's go to the south to check out the town, so... Let's do that, I guess. Um, yeah, interesting little thing, you know, the closer you get to the town, the louder the music gets. I, mean, I remember this music, so it's, it's so corny, but... But actually, you know, this is an adventure game, so, you know, one of the biggest things to do in an adventure game is not to, you know, just dive straight into something in particular, but to kind of look around, you know, gather in your surroundings, or whatever it is they say. So, okay, heading west from the town takes us to this little shop. Almost looks like a mill shop or something like that. Uh, yes, I know what everything is, but, you know, let's explore anyway. So look at this, you know... Baker Brothers Bakehouse. Yeah, Baker Brothers Bakehouse. Real, real ingenuity right there, you know, real creativity. But, you know, how about that? So, let's let's continue on, shall we? Oh, man, it takes a while to load. I might want to edit some of that. Like, some of these loading times, like, man, should I cut that? I don't know. And so here we have what looks like a... What is this? An, an inn. The Swarthy Hog Inn. Swarthy, swarthy, swarthy hogging. So an inn, two doors. Uh, yeah, okay. We can go in through the front door, or we can just keep walking and check out our surroundings, like I said. And you may not notice, that's, that's actually a pathway up north, but that's, that's important later on. And a haystack. A very, very obvious-looking haystack. That's another thing you'll notice in this game. The things that you're supposed to interact with tend to stick out. It's just, I guess it's like a graphical thing about DOS, you know, back in the day or whatever, but... Oh, stay away from those bees! Um, okay, I won't touch the bees, but I'm gonna grab this stick. As you can see, there's a stick that's right there. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, we're, you'll, you'll notice, like, you know, see the bees, like, they're really, like... Even the tree there, it kind of, like, protrudes from everything else. Ah, uh, the, the dog sound, or the dog music. A boy of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he digs up their large ant. Yes, he certainly does. Woof, woof. Oh, let's see, it looks like there's a lot of space out here, so... I'm gonna take a peek over here. I'm gonna leave the dog alone, because I don't know what to do with that just yet. But we're gonna take... There's nothing but a hot, dry desert further west. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. If you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. Well, fine, Cedric. Jeez, be that way. Just gonna take a look. That's really boring looking. Ooh, look at this. Looks like something's after him. 
Actually, I have never seen that thing. What? What was that? Was that... Was that an Easter egg? It looks like something's after him. Well, there you are. I was starting to get concerned. Yeah, because I was gone for 30 seconds, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing, you jerk. Yes, we know about the boy of the dog. And that's another reason why I don't want to do the voice acting version, because it doesn't always show the text and stuff. It just talks to you, and you got to wait and listen. To be honest, it's, it, it's better this way, even if you do get sick of hearing my dumb voice. Keep your eye on the gypsies, Graham. I don't trust them. Yeah, sure, Cedric. The dummy. He, he doesn't trust anything. He doesn't like anything in this game. Like I told you, he's worthless. It will cost you one gold coin to see Mother Mushka. Mother Mushka. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna walk. I can't. He's such a snot. The cost is one gold coin. Fine. I'm leaving. Because I don't need your help. Okay, you, you guys may just be like, why are you so excited? It's not so much that I'm excited, I guess, but this is one of those things where... This this I have fond memories of. This this scene here. A graceful weeping willow tree grows behind, beside a small pond created from her tears. In her branch-like arms, she clutches a beautiful harp, hmm, as a child would a cherished toy. I grab it. Leave... Oh, she's talking to me. Leave her harp alone. It's hers. She doesn't like me messing. I'm gonna talk to her because she can apparently talk. Uh, Miss Willow? Yes? You can talk? Of course I can. What'd you expect? Uh, that you would shut up. Well, I've never seen a talking tree before. What's wrong? Everything's wrong. Can't you tell I'm not really a tree? I'm really a princess. <sighs> you see, my fiancé and I were walking through this wood when the nasty old witch came along and was instantly charmed by my prince. When he naturally refused her advances, she jealously banished him to a faraway land and turned me into a tree. Then she stole my heart. Hmm. Stole your heart? Yes, she turned my heart to gold and took it away with her. The only way I can become human again is to have my heart brought back. Plot point, anybody? Of course. Now all I have to cheer me up is my harp. It's quite magical, you know. It plays the sweetest music you've ever heard. Now please, leave me alone in my song. Okay, I guess I will for now, because there's really not a whole lot we can do here just yet. Yeah, you know that, that magical music she mentioned, whatever, before. Man, I, you know, I have fond memories as a little kid of listening to this this music at this part of the game and just being like, oh man, I wish I could download an mp3, well, you know, back then downloading mp3s was really something you could do, but you know, like maybe get a record or a cassette tape of it or something. And hmm, what's this? It's a dwarf! An old grandfather gnome, sorry. He sits contentedly on an old stump and smokes a large pipe. He watches his grandson at play. Sitting on a stool in front of his house, a young gnome happily plays with an exquisite marionette. Hmm, another interesting thing. Hmm? Let's talk to him. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing here? Don't you know this is private property? Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. I was just noticing your son's marionette. Hmm, it's very interesting. Where did you get it? It's grandson, not son, and I made it for him. Why do you care? Not very nice, are you? I just wanted to comment on its artistry. It's very well done. I don't suppose it could be bought. How oh, nice of you to ask. If it could, the price would be very steep. I reckon you couldn't afford it. Now leave me my grandson be. I kind of switched from like a non accent to a semi Scottish one, I don't know why. Oh, uh, yeah, so he's not really. Uh, if I try to talk to the grandson, uh, he doesn't seem to want to talk to me. So instead, we're gonna. If I walk down this way, that takes me to the path over by the inn, mind you. So we're gonna walk this way, kind of explore. Again, you know, take a look at things. Oh, a sad man. And a, a bird. Oh, the bird flew away. Uh, yeah, okay, bird bath, that's nice. Upon a fallen logs is a dashing young prince, mm -hmm, who looks very sad and confused. How convenient. Let's speak to him. Excuse me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but noticing you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. My haircut's terrible. I've been searching everywhere for my fiance. She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses, fetching blue eyes and smooth... Jeez, man. No, sorry, I haven't seen anyone like that. 
That's what I figure. No one has seen her. I think that old witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. I'll keep an eye out for her. If I see her, I'll let you know you're looking for her. Okay. Well, how convenient. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. Thanks for not insulting my ridiculous hair. Yeah, now leave. Leave! Sorry, I shouldn't be so ridiculous. So, anyway, yeah, as you know now, there's that tree. It was turned into a tree, you know, when her dashing prince refused the advances of a witch. And now he's looking for her, and well, there you go. And once you know it, enter at your own risk. Back to the east is Crispin's house, yes, uh, but beyond the warning sign, the knowledge trees seem to close in, entangling and confusing all who would dare enter here. Well, we'll get back to that later. But back to the east is pretty much the end of our exploration for now. Because, as useless Cedric said, yep, leads right back to where we got started. So, we've explored now. Uh, I'd say, let's call this good enough for now, because that's this is quite a long episode, I guess. But, uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get around to some actual adventuring instead of just wandering next time on Let's Play King's Quest V. So until then, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between, this has been Foog, and uh, take it easy.